Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to this episode of The Determined Mom Show. I am here with the amazing Jen Mons from Jen Mons Coaching, and Jen and I have known each other for a while. She is just an amazing healer. She just teaches so much amazing stuff on her website and her academy. She has a lot of things going on, but I want to let her tell you about some of those things. And Jen, let us know how you got started and what you're doing as well. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really honored and excited to be here and just connect with you in this space as well. Thank you for the invitation to also just share kind of how I got started. I'm sure many of your listeners can relate to this, but I've always been someone who's maybe had a little bit of an overachiever type of personality. I really love to just thrive and and create and maximize, I think, kind of life in, in many different areas. I'm a former graduate of a military academy. I was in the military. I was an engineer. And then at the age of 28, which is about 15 years ago, I had a life threatening experience with the birth of my first daughter that then sent me down the path of holistic healing. So I started my coaching practice about 15 years ago. Before that, I had worked as a corporate exec for 10 years. And that holistic health coaching career just ended up continuing to evolve into becoming a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher and doing energy work, and then eventually a certified life coach. And then a couple of years ago, really making the shift in 2018 from coach to business owner, and then deciding to train and certify life coaches and energy intuitives to help women create their purpose and take it to prosperity. So it's been a 15 year evolving career that's had many, many ups and downs, many, many challenges and blessings along the way. (laughs) That's awesome. I, well, I feel like most of the things that we become are overcoming something or overcoming a challenge that we face in our lives. And I love that your journey into where you are today in your business and in your life are a result of that. I think it's really important. Yes. Thank you for highlighting that because it's one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about. And it's really that idea of, I like to use the word transmuting. Transmuting is taking the energy of of something and, and really highlighting and inviting women to explore this new idea. And I do work specifically with women, so I'll I'll speak to women, although it it can apply for anybody. But the idea that we all have programming and we all have experiences in our life that we create survivor strategies for, and we start to recognize maybe some, what you've probably heard, you've heard the word, some type of limiting belief or a core wound. It really just depends on the experience that created this programming. And often it's something that when we're really young and there's really four types of limiting beliefs that are probably the most common that I see. One would be around the idea of being unlovable or only lovable when, so we put a condition on it. The other would be, uh, I'm only wor- unworthy or only worthy when. So again, putting a condition on our worth, when I look a certain way, when I marry that certain guy, when I get that degree, when I make that money, uh, that one would be mine. And I see that one a lot. Uh, The other one is um, just around being supported, like feeling unseen or unheard. Sometimes this feels like abandonment or rejection. And the other one is a need for safety. Usually something happens in our life. I don't know anybody who gets away without something happening, like just an event. And it doesn't even have to be like a traumatic event. It's just something where as a child, we create a belief that we need to show up a certain way in order to feel a way that we want to feel. And so we create a survivor strategy and it sometimes serves us really well and it's mad really well. So for example, for the person who feels unlovable or unworthy, they may end up becoming a perfectionist and overachiever, and that may take them to a very successful career. However, yet still feeling very unfulfilled and unhappy. So we don't really figure out until later on in our life when we're like, well, I did all the things I was supposed to do, but it's like, I'm not feeling the way I want to feel. I have everything I think I'm quote supposed to have, but I'm still feeling, you know, unfulfilled that we start to learn that we actually start this kind of unbecoming. We actually, the becoming becomes the unbecoming. And what we learn kind of to come back full circle is the one thing that we were missing is the one thing that 
we usually become, which really when we get to that next level of healing is the thing that we always were. Wow. So there's there's a saying in my teachings and my practice in my coaching academy, the Embodied Soul Coaching Academy, are very much around somatic intuition, embodiment, body wisdom, and there's some spiritual practices in there as well. And so there is a, a thought leader, Rumi, who says, what you are seeking is seeking you. From an energetic perspective, the thing that we're here doing doing and working through only in that moment in time when we realize that we already experience can we then really start to understand that balance of being and becoming. That's where energy management comes into play is that really from that perspective, it, when we look back through the lens of our whole life, like the thing that we always knew that we wanted to do or that was easy for us or, you know, that lights us up is what we already are because you can't create something that's not within you. Like you can't, if you can have gratitude for another person, the great, you are gratitude. It's the feeling is within you, but our mind likes to think that everything is outside of us. Yeah. When really, when we come full circle, the unbecoming is realizing that none of it was separate to begin with. And so this is really the foundation for energy management. And what I like to encourage women to do to run their business is to really run it from a place of true alignment, true alignment to their soul, their truth. What It's really the same word, whatever resonates for a woman, but their purpose and really let go of, of the hustle and the grind and the distraction and the over busyness and comma, there's always the end, knowing when to discern alignment and flow with aligned action because both are important. And when we can start with energy management and first take care of ourselves and remember really it's a remembering of what's what our values are what's important to us what is in alignment with us if we can create the foundation there then we really become a thriving business owner in in the being not just the doing yeah that makes complete sense as well. I have a question about energy management. Are we talking about managing your energy with other people, like your interactions? Are we talking about managing your actual physical energy? You know, I just want to kind of delve into that just a little bit. So then that way we can understand what that management means. Yes. Wonderful question. Thank you for asking because there are, as with everything, there are many layers to that. I speak of energy management in terms of inviting people to step away from the idea of time management because I you'll hear people say I don't have the time for that and the truth is we all have the same amount of time like we all have 24 hours in a day right so no there isn't one person who has less time than another it's how we choose to use our time which is really about using our energy that helps us to create aligned action energy management is the perspective of only choosing what is aligned for us so for example what I ask myself and some some of your community may relate to this is sometimes it might be hard to say no. This is a big one for many women who are, who's the community that I serve, but I ask myself three questions before I commit to anything. Is this in alignment with me? Is this in alignment with my values? Before you can answer that question, energy management starts with knowing what your values are, knowing what lights you up, knowing what's important to you and knowing what isn't. Something can sound like a really great idea, but it might not be in alignment with you a partnership with a person, um, a collaboration with another woman could sound amazing. It just might not be the right fit. And that doesn't make it wrong. And I think so often we get into doing what we think we're quote, supposed to do. So the first invitation is anytime you notice yourself thinking that you should do something, immediately stop and step back because there's nothing we have to do. We get to choose. As soon as we put that word should, we really give our power away. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to the place of choosing from a, a place of alignment, is this in alignment with me? Is it the right time? So I really want to do this thing, but I've got all these other things going on and... I'm also an intuitive coach. And so sometimes the challenge of the intuitive coach is that we can see things two, three, four years out. And so really discerning, like 
I know this is an alignment for me, but is it the right time? And then third question is, does it have to be me or can I seek support? So even if you're a mom at home, like cleaning your house, like if you're running your own business, is it, do you have to be the one to clean your house or can you pay a hundred dollars a month to have somebody come clean your house or something like that and give yourself four more hours to work on your business? Energy management. Yeah. So that's, so that's one part of it is, is really starting from the place of what's in alignment for me. Now you ask the question energy with other people's. And so that's a really good question because there's a lot to unpack there. And I, I actually just recorded my podcast, The Embodied Healing Self around the wounded badge of empathy, because many people, if they may start to learn and understand that when they're exhausted after hanging out with people, that they may discover that they are what we have heard as called an empath or empathic. And so we take on other people's energy. There's a couple of things to unpack around that. And it, that is really the invitation to do our own inner work, because there's a reason that we're showing up either consciously or subconsciously exhausted. We're either trying to people please because we don't think we're lovable or worthy enough as we are. And so we're over giving in some way. So in my world, I train intuitive coaches. Maybe we're intuitive and we really truly want somebody else to see us the way that we see them. Them. We want clarity. So subconsciously, because we want somebody to see or hear us, remember that limiting belief we're not seen or heard, it subconsciously creates us taking on too much of somebody else's experience. So there's the need to be seen or heard and also just the need to be supported. A lot of taking on and, and also people pleasing and believing that we're lovable enough. And so the answer to your question is, is that there's a subconscious reprogramming that I spoke about in the beginning that we're not even aware of. Here's this tip that I want to share with the audience is that we're all experiencing this in some way. There's usually a relationship in everybody's life. It's either your relationship with money, a relationship with a partner, your relationship with your job or your career, with your health, with your kids, but there's probably some relationship in your life that's more work than the others. It's a little bit off. It seems like this subconscious belief that we have underneath shows up as rejection, abandonment, not lovable, hopeless, not seen, not heard, keep showing up again and again in different ways. And it's not about the money, the partner, the job. It's really each of those, whatever that breakdown in relationship is, is reflecting back our internal belief system. Yeah. So it's really just noticing and taking a moment to pause and being like, okay, this is really uncomfortable. The easy thing to do that is happening right now, and I think this is kind of what the pandemic really helped out with, is to distract ourselves with busyness and overwhelm. Yeah. Like, this part of my life is really uncomfortable, but I'm really good at creating content. And I'm just going to go in my room and create more programs, right? So if we're talking to business owners, or I'm going to fix my kids' problems, I'm going to make them have better grades, or I'm going to go work out 10 hours a week. But what we do is create subconsciously what could be also seen as kind of a survivorship strategy to overcome the fact that something is really uncomfortable in our life and there's a pattern that shows up when if we really stop and just give this give space and permission to acknowledge this then we can choose to shift it and so that's the word transmute is we can shift that and this is where we started our conversation, shift it into the gift. And so if you remember when I shared my life story, I had a health crisis. I shifted that into becoming a health coach, had a second health crisis. Then I became a yoga meditation teacher because I was being shown that eating healthy wasn't enough. And then I started doing working through emotional empowerment. Every challenge in my life became the opportunity to do one of two things, become, well, three things, become the victim of my circumstances, which was never going to happen for me because that's just, that's not a program that I have. But the one that I had to really work through was not allow myself to be too distracted in the fixing of everything that was happening and really slow down and discern like, what is this, you know, really about and teaching me here? What has happened over the past 15 years is that the less hustle and grinding I did, which is really easy for me because I've an overachiever goes to a military academy, right? So right. The less grinding and overachieving I did and the more flow I welcomed in and the more aligned I was by starting with my own personal practice, the more abundant I became in creation. So there's this idea of creator consciousness versus consumer consciousness where we're consuming, we're just doing and taking and creating is you have to have space for creation. 
Yeah. And the more abundant I became in clients and also financially. But if we're too busy, and this is where energy management comes in, if we're too busy because we have, we're in scarcity that we think we have to hustle, then there's no space for anything new to come in. There's no space for really even new clients or money. It'll come. It'll just be really uncomfortable. Yeah. So there is just kind of another, and that's what energy management is, is creating the space for things to flow energetically. But like, if you have a cup of water, you can't put water in a full cup. It'll just overflow. Right. So we have to create the space for wine or herbal tea or whatever, you know? (laughs) So it's kind of that kind of give a perspective. So energy management is getting super clear on what's important to us And being okay with saying no and saying yes to only the things that matter. It's being aware of how our energy shifts around other people and noticing when it happens, noticing which relationship is reflecting back to us in our life. And then from that place, if you really want to go deeper and totally transmute limiting beliefs and fears and blocks, being willing to become aware of the subconscious belief underneath and then shifting it. Because some of us have been living for this with whatever that belief is for like 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And imagine, and I want to say too, that um, it doesn't just happen overnight. Like it's an unpeeling process, an unbecoming process. So it requires compassion. It requires, uh, you know, really just being gentle with yourself because it, it can start to unpack a lot and just noticing, oh yeah, the first time I felt, you know, unworthy or the need to prove myself was at age seven. And then I happened to get it at 12 and 15 and 18 and 20 and 20. And it just kept happening in different ways. Having support in that process too, whatever that looks like, a friend, a coach, a healer, a teacher, for some people with very traumatic experiences, a therapist is necessary. Finding support because we're never meant to do any of this alone. And I certainly wouldn't be where I am with the many mentors and healers that I've had. So that's kind of energy management in a nutshell. It's both internal and the relationships with others. Yeah, that is amazing. And I do have a couple questions. First question is energy avoidant. Is Mm -hmm. that such a thing? So like I have a very close family member that when I used to go over to her house, I would just feel like almost immediately when I went in, I would just feel like exhausted. And it's, I know it's definitely, like you said, that belief system that, you know, we just are not on the same page ever. It's just very draining. I find myself just completely avoiding that. Is that a thing? And is that a good thing to do? Yeah. So the question I'm hearing you ask is energy avoidance, healthy or unhealthy? Mm-hmm. And, and it's both. Yeah. So it's really, it's an invitation to lean in and to teach you something. There are times where there are relationships that are just toxic. And remember, a a relationship is a co-creation, so there's two people. So the difference is how we choose to let it affect us and how we choose to show up. So it is possible to show up in that relationship without feeling exhausted. Although we can't change the person, the other person in the relationship, which we can't, and it's not for us to do. What we can do is really lean in and get more clear with how am I feeling? because she's really reflecting back to you something within you. There's a, a, I like to call it a trigger or an activation. A trigger would be more trauma responsive. So, you know, it, there may be a behavior pattern or something that she's doing that's triggering a past traumatic event, which in that case, I mean, there's so many levels that that could be, you know, you would need, a person would need support in that. And activation is when we choose to lean into it and move forward. And that's when the shift can really happen. In the case of what you're speaking about, there's, and this is very common, there's a person who we get that uncomfortable feeling and we feel exhausted. What we can do as individuals and take personal self-responsibility for is really being like, like what's like happening here? I mean, literally having a conversation with a part of us that's feeling exhausted. Like, what is it? Like, I'll give you four steps that there's a process called nonviolent communication. It's Marshall Rosenberg. There's a whole book. There's a coaching practice around this. And we can use this step with ourselves. So we use it to communicate with other people, but we can use it with ourselves. And the whole four step process is really about understanding what our feelings and needs are. That's it. Because everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants to love and everybody wants to be seen and heard and understood at some level. The four steps would be just taking awareness of the situation with no emotion. So just 
in your mind if you're doing this for yourself. And by the way, this is also the same four steps you could use with the person who you're having this experience with if you want to try and heal the relationship, but just state the facts. Like I notice this is me, I'm showing up. When I show up at my cousin's house, that I feel like exhausted. I get there, She does she say something to you first? Are you feeling tired before you get there? Like getting super clear on what's happening. Cause if you're tired before you get there, then there's already some, some probably anxious thoughts happening. And then step two is to express, what am I feeling? And there's really actually six to eight basic primary emotions. A feeling is not, I feel betrayed or rejected because that implies that somebody betrayed or rejected us, but we have to peel it down to like sadness, anger, joy. They're very, very basic emotions. And there are nice tools on the website that can help with that. There's two emotion wheels, Dr. Pletchik and Dr. Gloria Wilcox that have a really nice color wheel of what basic primary emotions are. And I'm sure there's others. Those are the ones that I use. And then under that, getting clear on what the need is. I notice when I go over there, maybe underneath the exhaustion is sadness. Maybe there's a sadness that you can't connect with her in the way that you'd like to. And then getting clear on what do I need? So I'm feeling sad and what I need is to have a conversation and just express this to her. And then the fourth thing is to make a request. And so when we're having a conversation with someone else, we could make a request of them, which could be as simple as, you know, just asking them to reflect back what they heard you say, or it could just be to show up in it in a different way if they'd be willing to. But if we're doing this with ourselves, the request could be to just continue noticing how I feel when I'm around this person. It can be super simple. It doesn't have to be like a fixing thing. And then the fifth step, which is not part of the NBC, but I think is super important is to release the attachment, release the attachment to anything changing or to any outcome. So what's happening is we have an experience. There's a person in our life reflecting back to us that we're uncomfortable in some way. And if we can use the process with ourselves to really understand what it is that we're that we're seeking or that we need, we can really unpack what that limiting belief probably is that keeps showing up. Yeah. So if that makes sense, there's something I would invite you to lean into around what's, what is your experience that's happening? Because it is easier to just avoid the experience. However, it will likely keep coming up yeah. and, it, and you'll, you'll always be tired. And it, you might even notice that you feel that way around other people. They might have a similar behavior or uh, many people do do the avoidance. It's the easiest thing to do, but what really matters is like, how do you want to show up? Like, what do you want your experience to be? And I've done this to my family. I think family's, you know, the hardest. So my parents, and it's been very healing and very amazing because I am now in a place in time with my parents as they're aging and, you know, not really doing that well, where I can be in just total unconditional love and acceptance rather than And that, whereas I used to be exhausted all the time and the same thing with my sister, like there's, when it comes to family, there's so much to unpack, but I got really clear on what was happening for me. I had no attachment to change who she was or to even actually change the situation. What it comes down to is that part of us wants to be acknowledged and seen and heard and not ignored. So it's really about just the self-work of slowing down and just being curious of like, when was the first time I felt this way? So I feel this way around her, but what do I notice? When do I feel this way in my life? When was the first time I felt this way? And really get clear on what that initial experience was that created a belief pattern a program that keeps showing up. Yeah, that's awesome. And the answer to that question is birth because it's my sister. So <laughs> feel you girl. Those are the soul, like, you know, those are I, I do believe that we choose to co-create these relationships so that we can each evolve and grow as individuals on our own path. And when we look at it from that perspective, we can really stop taking things personally. We can actually have gratitude, believe it or not, for the experiences that have been difficult because they have been the experiences that have allowed us to continue to grow and do our own self-exploration. I love that. You've given us so much information and so many strategies that we can use to really manage our energy and manage the flow of our energy. So I thank you so much for 
everything that you've given us. It's a lot and I love it. Where can people find out how to work kind of with you? Yeah, thanks for the invitation. So uh, I have two websites. So jenmons.com, J-E-N-M as in Mary, O-N-S dot com. And I, I only do private mentorship and those women would be women who are willing to do from purpose to prosperity, really through my soul wisdom imprinting technique that I'm getting trademarked, but it's really taking a woman through who's willing to do like the inner transformation work, who's interested in becoming a coach, learning coaching skills. Our program is currently under review with the ICF. So balancing that flow and that structure means for me, integrity of core competency and coaching ethics, and then taking that to prosperity through business alchemy. So my private coaching is only specifically for women who are doing inner transformation work, really want to create an impact on the world and shift from healer to coach to a business owner. And then I have the Embodied Soul Coaching Academy. So Embodied Soul Coaching Academy is, is the URL for that. And it's a three semester program. It is my private coaching program, but it's done in group format. Our next, I'm not sure when this is going live, but our next uh, enrollment opening is June 21st on the summer solstice. And so that's a three semester program. It's 220 hours. It's a 13 month program. It's an investment and of time and financial resources. Again, for the woman who is ready to do, discover their core limiting beliefs, transmute them, heal their relationship with joy and money and intuitive nourishment, creating sacred space. There's a 12 module inner transformation program that we begin with because what I have learned over the years is that sustainable thriving coaching practices are really only happening for those that have been really willing to do their own work. Because as you probably know, and everybody on this community knows, the journey of entrepreneurship is is a test of personal transformation. (laughs) I mean, I'm laughing because I'm in it. It's like, you think you're done and then you're not, but it's, so it is that. And then the second part is the uh, four months of coaching certification. And our school specializes specifically in intuitive development. So we do do the energy work. We learn the subconscious reprogramming, the energy body, and we use somatic intuition. So somatic practices to really learn and trust our body, letting go of the thoughts, even letting go or transmuting the thoughts and the emotions and dropping into the wisdom of the body. And then the third semester is the three month business alchemy course, which is more of that balance of flow and structure in creating a a prosperous and thriving business. So those are the two places that you can find me. Both of those have Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts, Embodied Soul Coaching Academy, or Jen Mons. And I have the podcast, the Embodied Healing Self Podcast. Yes. I love it. Everything you do is just so, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but every interaction with you that I've ever had has just been like this peaceful, like glowing, you know what I mean? Like I just feel your energy and I love it. Thank you. I am a hundred percent receiving that compliment. This is another thing I just want to end with is just encouraging women to specifically to just receive, like receive support, receive compliments. And that's part of energy management is the receiving. It's not just the giving. It's, it's really, truly like you say that. And like, I'm letting it land in my body. And for so many years, I'd be like, oh yeah, thanks. But no, I'm really like, I value that. I value that you love my energy and that you feel that way when you're in my presence. So I am hundred percent receiving that. So thank you. You're welcome. And are you on Clubhouse just out of curiosity? Yeah. So I'm new to Clubhouse and yes, I am. I'm diving in and my intention is to create my own group on Clubhouse. So I am new. I am on, I'm a newbie, but yes, I I love to grow more. I love the platform, the short interactions that I've had. And my intention is to set up a weekly meetup on Clubhouse for embodied soul, just embodied soul, because that's really embodied soul is about if for those of you that are like, well, what does that mean? It's the idea that, that we are not just physical, but that we have a soul, we have a spirit and that you may have heard of it in terms of like your higher self, or maybe for some of you, it's, it's 
just divine love from God. It's very, it's that energy of living our truth. So without the stories. So embodied soul is really coming home to our truth and letting go of the stories and the attachments and the, the busyness and the hustling and all the things that we do in this, this human uh, you know, as humans having our life experience, but really being in that place of like, what am I really here to just be? Because whatever that is, you commit to that, you show up in that way in every area of your life. And it's a lot less work. That's alignment. Yeah. It's rather than it's becoming health, not just eating healthy and working out, but to the point where it's like ingrained in you. It's not something that you have to work towards anymore. It's becoming truth, becoming integrity, becoming love, unconditional, which starts with each of us. If you have Clubhouse, I'd love to come to your room, invite me, send me a message. I'm new to it. I know that you're kind of the guru on all of these, these new business things. So yeah, yeah I, um, more. I think I'm already connected with you, but um, yes. I am looking forward to following you and seeing what you're up to on there. Thank you so much, Jen, for gracing us with your presence and providing all of this amazing information about energy management, flow and strategy with us. Thank you so much, Amanda. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. Definitely. This episode of the Determined Mom Show is brought to you by Google Growth Generator. This 21 day email course will help you learn to optimize your Google My Business listing in the same way that we do for our clients here at TDM Marketing. Our client, a baby sleep specialist, got 126.32% more website visits in the first month after her optimization was completed. Another client, a chiropractic practice, got 26.67% more phone calls in the first month after optimization was completed. And finally, our client, who is a residential cleaning service, got 61.11% more website visits in the first month after optimization. If you're not sure if Google My Business optimization is for you, listen to what Kristen Ratten from Kristen Ratten Content Services had to say about her optimization. I hired Amanda to optimize my Google My Business listing and within 10 days, my views were up 150%. This may be one of the most valuable things I've ever done for my business. And Amanda made it quick, easy, and painless. If you are ready to get started with your Google My Business optimization, go over to gomybusiness.com. That's G-O-mybusiness.com forward slash growth.